So I'm in the marketing department here at Rackspace, and we always are trying to find out what our customers are doing. Are they uh, up for renewal? Are they responding to our emails? Are they uh, looking at our website? What, who are they? What are they doing? And uh, Agile One is a company that helps other companies see exactly that data, and we're going to find out what the world of marketing is all about right now. Who are you? Uh, Rob, thanks for having me here. Uh, my name is Omer Artun. I'm the CEO of Agile One. Uh, my background uh, a little bit is I have a PhD in machine learning and, and physics um, uh, from Brown University. And then after that, I joined McKinsey and Company as a consultant uh, in their New York office. Did a lot of mar sales and marketing analytics as projects. And then I decided to apply some of my learning at McKinsey as well as my machine learning background at, in marketing. And after that, I started Agile One about seven years ago um, and growing it ever since. Very cool. Agile One is aimed at enterprises, bigger companies, not, not a little mom and pop shop, right? You know, you're, you're aiming at something with a, a thousand or more customers. That's right. So uh, we're targeted more towards the mid-market enterprises, so anywhere Anybody who has you know, a couple hundred thousand customers or more uh, that they're trying to understand where, you know, uh, where analytics can really help understand uh, the needs and behaviors of those customers so you can build better you know, longer term relationships and um, you know, spend your marketing dollars wisely. Yeah, and we're, Rackspace is right around 200,000 customers, so we qualify. That's exactly right. And, and so we, we have all these customers, and they vary from you know somebody with a, a WordPress blog all the way up to mm, TED, for instance, you know, with that's that, right. That's right. lots of videos and lots of, uh, tens of millions or hundreds of millions of uh, visitors. Um, what would you help us see in our customer base? What, what, what does your tool let me see that I couldn't see before? So um, taking the question from a uh, customer perspective, think about the life cycle of a customer and what you would do differently as a marketer you know, along the life cycle. So first, you can think about acquisition of a customer. So when you're acquiring a customer, one of the most important things is you know, how much money did I spend and what's the potential for that customer, right? So at that point in time, you don't know, you know what the customer is going to become, but you know, if you get one small deal from you know, farmer's insurance, for example, right? you know that the potential for getting farmer's insurance business, even though it could be a $1,000 a month you know, subscription in the beginning, now you have the chance to, to grow that account. But if a WordPress blogger comes along and you know, they buy the same $1,000 service, you don't have the same upside. So yep. knowing what the upside is, for example, with analytics, gives you great flexibility or, or targeting and precision to go after you know, different opportunities. The, the new world of customer acquisition is probably on uh, ads on Google or ads on websites and stuff like that. Can you plug that in and, and track right. where they clicked from? Like, like if exactly. they, uh, my friend at Printing for Less used to do this, right? He would buy an ad for business cards or right. four color brochure printing. So somebody searches Google clicks on his ad, and he would track them into his system. That's right. And he would know the total cost of, uh, he Acquis would know the cost of acquisition, and then he would track, and he would know if somebody bought a four-color brochure that they would spend $2,000 within right. a lifetime. A, a business card customer would spend, you know, $50. That, that's exactly right. What, what most marketers that we see today is, you know, um, they, can, they can pretty much track, like, how much money they're spending and how many, like, orders they get. So they measure, they, they, they track, uh, keep track of upfront metrics like cost per order, cost per acquisition. Um, fewer customers that we see or fewer prospects that we see can, keep tr can tie those you know, upfront activities on Google to the lifetime value of customers. So if you're using tools like Google Analytics, it doesn't allow you to track customer level information. So you can't track that click to a customer that actually purchased. I mean, and, um, and we allow you to do that. We allow you to make that connection okay. you know, together. And then Another uh, big, big problem today with marketers is that you know, each order is now a lot of, like 80% of the purchases are now being researched online, and people have multiple clicks or multiple tra you know, uh, interaction behavior before they make a purchase. So when you're actually getting that customer, you've paid for that thing six times. So how do you allocate that sale to which of those, or which combination of those brought it in, 
is a big challenge for a lot of marketers where you where the analytics can really help. That's just on the acquisition side. So yep. now if you if you move forward to Rackspace, you know, I, I buy a subscription from you and I'm gonna renew at some point, right? If you could predict who's likely not to renew and what the potential value loss is, now you can start treating customers very differently. Or, you know, if you wanna upsell some people and you know you have people that are opening and clicking on your emails and they're actively engaged in managing the accounts online, you know that you know you can talk to those people differently than somebody who just signed up and you know not engage with you at all, right? With cloud competing, it's a lot more complicated because uh, okay. some businesses will uh, like if you're doing an ad campaign for the Super Bowl, you're going to buy a lot of cloud computing right for those that week, right? right? And then you're going to delete all your servers right the week <laughs> after because there's That's not right. going to be cloud any traffic. Computing. Yeah, exactly. You know? exactly. And so we we need to know every Super Bowl you're going to buy a lot of servers and maybe have them all ready for you and have them pre pre set up for you. That's right. So one of the things, for example, that we do is we look at the seasonality of customers. And you know, one of our algorithms is a clustering algorithm that groups people together based on behavior. So in that case, one of the groups will come up will be you know people who buy you know people who expand to thousand servers or more you know in a, in an instant you know in 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 specific time frames, right? So so you would see a spiky customer versus a, a you know a, 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 a constant demand customer very differently. Yeah. And you can now put those two into different groups and trigger different, you know, actions based with your salespeople or with, you know, uh, online uh, automated, our, you know. Our marketing. emails, for instance, yeah. can be yeah. automated. And exactly, can... exactly. Our system complete has complete integration through the APIs to most of the major uh, email providers like Silverpop and so forth. So, you know, when I detect that you're likely to leave me or when I detect that a likely spike is coming from you, I can make that information, I can make that list available in Silverpop so you can, and, and the reason why it's there, so you know, the marketing person can go in and say, you know, we have a, um, you know, don't, for, don't forget to you know, activate your whatever, or, or they can talk about you know, five ways to you know, prepare for the Super Bowl ads kind of yeah. stuff. So. What else does it show that you know, when I'm sitting at the dashboard, what else can I see? So, so what we're trying to do, I mean, my, my background is, as I said, is machine learning, and I've done a lot of kind of artificial intelligence stuff, and the thought process I subscribe to is something called intelligence amplification, which is not artificial intelligence, but it's basically uh, promises that, you know, machine and humans together achieve more than machines or humans alone. Yeah. So we're not trying to eliminate the human out of the process. The human creativity is always there. What we're trying to do is, you know, give you a tool that, that allows you to, rather than kind of digging with your hands, you're digging with an excavator, right? It amplifies your, your power. And the way we do that is mimicking the human intelligence process. And, and that process evolves in a couple stages. One is uh, you are um, detecting a pattern, right? Yeah. So, um, I mean, I'm gonna give a very e easy example that everybody can understand. Like I'm looking at my kids' you know, scores you know, throughout the year in the quizzes. And if I detect that you know, his scores are going down, now what do I do? I project whether he's going to fail or not at the end of the quarter, right? So now I made a forecast and a prediction of what is going to happen. And then I can say, well, if he started with A's and my forecast is a B, I might say, fine, whatever. Uh, but if it's an F, then you know, I need to do something about it. Now I go into a, a cause and effect you know, understanding. So if I can predict that you're going to churn or if I'm going to predict my kid's going to get an F, I want to understand why, right? So that why question is important, which is, you know, which there are mathematical techniques to answer that question. And then, uh, and then the third step is, uh, you know, figuring out what I want to do, you know, and I, I might say, well, I'm going to get a private lesson or, or whatever. And, and the last step is measurement of the results. So I take an action and then I want to be able to measure it. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is, keep that creative process as a human, but automate all of the rest of the processes, which is, you know, of course, managing all of the data, but signal detection, you know, uh, factorizing uh, reasons, predicting the future, and then when you take action, allowing you to measure what happened so that you can see if it worked or not. Very so cool. we're trying to automate that human intelligence process. Very cool. What, what do we need to get this all set up? You know, at, at Rackspace, we have lots of customer I'm not even sure all the systems that a normal enterprise has, but how do you? How long does it take, and how do you get it set up? 
So our standards, so we've built a lot of automation in our, in our implementation process. Uh, we've, we're completely automated with uh, a lot of the major you know, service providers like the Cormetrics, Omniture, you know, the Silver Pops of the world. So you don't have to do anything there. Uh, and we have a, a very robust API system that you can upload data to, or we can come and grab data from any uh, relational or structured data source. You know, it might be your usage or transaction product systems. Standard implementation takes anywhere between four to eight weeks. And then how do you charge? It's not by number of employees. What, how do you charge on this? It's based on, so we are impacting, uh, your, you know, we are impacting your customers and your transactions. So, you know, whether one person is using our solution or 10 people are using it, you know, for us, you know, the big, uh, the big processing that we're doing is, is on the big data. Um, so we charge by uh, the number of transactions and number of customers you have in the system and as many people can use it uh, as you want to. So, and it's in the tens of thousands per month if you have 200,000 or more customers. Somewhere. Yeah, it's, you know, we have very small customers that are kind of, you know, people who are in the 10 to $20 million, you know, revenue range, which we charge, you know, anywhere from like four or $5,000, all the way up to, you know, really, we have really large customers that have, you know, four or $5 billion in revenue, which we charge, you know, um, close to uh, uh, six figures um, per yeah. month. What, what and is it's a monthly and it's a monthly charge monthly monthly charge what does it do that's different than other marketing systems what you know what's your differentiator what what sets you apart I guess so uh, one differentiator that we have is we're, we're a cl pure cloud-based system we're highly scalable and we're built on uh, um, you know uh, software from you guys like OpenStack and HDFS and, and those type of things that you know provides enormous scale which brings a lot of the processing time down to real time or near real time. So that's one differentiation we have. Second differentiation we have is our DNA in, in, in uh, predictive analytics. When you talk about big data, to me, uh, it means that a lot of the data is junk. It's a lot of the data you need to sift through and find the patterns in, yeah. that, in that data. Because now, instead of 10 years ago, you would get transactions from people, which is real data, like I bought something from you and I paid, that, that's 100% information, right? But now if I'm researching something, typed a keyword, looked at something, it's intent, it's behavior, but a lot of that, like a lot of that data is, is, doesn't have information in it. You need to distill it down to a very small amount. So what that requires is, you know, and that data is incomplete, it, yep. it, that data is noisy, so you need a system that can deal with those type of incompleteness, noisiness, and, and you know, um, sig low signal to noise ratio, and predictive technology is specifically suited for that. And our DNA is, is purely in that. That's our, that's our second differentiator. And our third differentiator is you know, going from end to end. Like we're, we're basically providing a solution rather than a tool. So um, you know, for a marketer, you give us your data, and we allow you to execute campaigns you know, end to end so that you're not we don't say, well, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to buy this software. We're basically allowing them uh, to have uh, data scientists in the cloud, um, you know, with a subscription model. Now you have you have uh, a, a wide variety of customers. H how does it serve each customer differently? I, you know, because Rackspace is going to be a cloud computing customer. You, That's right. You have people buying uh, power tools. That's right. We have yeah. very different customers. We serve, you know companies who sell heating oil. We have, uh, Shazam is a big customer of ours, which is an iPhone, like, you know, mobile app. Uh, th they're one of our big, bigger customers. Um, we have uh, people who sell uh, pet medicine. We have people who sell uh, power tools, like you said. There are commonalities among all of these clients, which is, you know, there's a customer, and the customer, you know, does business with me. They, they interact with me. Each of those things that they buy and interact with might be different. But the fundamentals are the same, right? So I have a wallet, you know, I have a, a brand affinity to a brand, and I do business with you or not. So there are fundamental things that are standard across all of, all of our spectrum of customers. And then there's, of course, uh, things that are unique to each customer, right? So, you know, you might have a subscription model, the other customer might be selling discrete products, the other might be selling hourly services. So in that case, our platform is configurable uh, so that you know you can configure additional uh, elements easily. When you say predictive analytics, that gets me hot and bothered sure. for, my, for my book, Age of Context. <laughs> 
what is it doing on my screen? What, what would I see a customer being predicted to do? You know, what, 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 what does your system come and tell me about a customer? Intelligence is about, you know, if you look at the, the dictionary word, it's about assimilating information and adapting to it, right? Yeah. So, um, so the fir first step is, you know, first step of predictive is, you know, humans detect changes, okay? So you need a system where it detects changes in behavior. <coughs> so changes in customer behavior, changes in, you know, purchases, changes in the type of products I buy. That's, you know, one type of thing that, that we can detect. So we can just say, look, we had, you know, um, this affiliate source uh, uh, that was giving us great customers, now it stopped giving us, now started giving us crap customers. So how do we, like I now want to detect that change and want to alert the marketer to say, you know, you got to go fix this because we're not getting customers that are 80% one-time buyers versus it used to be 50% one-time buyers. There's a problem here. First, it's about detecting change and there's predictive technology that, that's used there. Second is people, inherently want to group things together so that they can deal with, they can generalize, right? So that's you know, what I call clustering uh, does. It creates personas that I can deal with, right? So that, that's a predictive technology that marketers can use. Give you an exam concrete example. One of our customers sells vitamins um, uh, online. And when we looked at their customers, so I know what every customer bought, but that's like impossible for me to keep track of as a yep. marketer, right? So what I want to do is, are there natural groups of customers that behave similarly? And of course there is. Yep. There are people who are, you know, you look at their pattern, like I don't know who they are, but I look at their buying patterns and I group them together and we look at the DNA of that cluster and we find that these are people who are buying joint medicine and heart medicine and so forth. And then you say, these are probably like old people who are trying to stay healthy. And then you find another group of people that are buying a bunch of kind of whey protein and stuff like that. You say, oh, these are athletes and stuff like that. So now you can now understand that 40% of your customers is this and you can break this down by region. So now in Florida, I have a much more prominent set of you know, older people that I'm serving. Yeah. Now with that, I might merchandise my store differently. I might merchandise my email differently and so forth. So that's a secondary heuristics that, that uh, um, that predictive technology provides, which is this, uh, you know, kind of natural tendency for people to group things together. Third thing uh, is on the predictive side is predicting what's going to happen, right? What is the likelihood that you're going to come back to my store? What is the likelihood that you looked at something yesterday? What's the probability that you're going to come back and buy that, or and so forth? So humans naturally anticipate things, and that also, you know, uh, is 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 part of the predictive yep. predictive technology. And then, and then the last piece is more correlative things. So people want to correlate things to each other. So if you bought this, what is the next thing you're going to buy? Like if there's a guy like this who's a, who's a similar person. So people try to kind of say, what, is, what, what are things in my neighborhood that is similar to me? So if I need to you know, kind of bucketize, those are the four buckets I would come up with. I hope it wasn't a long No, that's, that's awesome. So. And it, it gives me a sense of where, where we would use it at Rackspace. Right. Um, how, just one last question. How, uh, tell me about your company, how many employees, uh, and how are you funded? Uh, sure, thank you. So um, w I've started the company about seven years ago. I uh, bootstrapped it to, uh, uh, until about two years ago, which then I partnered with Sequoia Capital as our Series A investors. Uh, and um, we've done really well last year uh, after our investment, and, and uh, we just raised our Series B about two months ago from Sequoia again and Mayfield as well uh, as participating. S smart and guys, they invested in Rackspace too. They so. did, yeah. They're yeah. The, yeah. Sequoia did at least. <laughs> yeah. yep. And uh, we're about 80 employees and we're, we have operations both in US and Europe. Uh, where we have a client base uh, that's spread around the world. Where can I learn more about your company? Uh, you can learn about us on our website, uh, agileone.com. Um, Very cool. Thank you so Thank much you. for coming out and talking to me about Thank it. You. I'm looking forward to trying it out. Thank you. Thanks for having me here.